Data stores are used for storing connection information to Azure storage services, while data sets are references to the location of data source. In this video, we will be covering what are data stores, adding data stores to workspace, using Azure Blob and file data stores, what are data sets, creating and registering data sets, reading data from data sets, and data set versioning. Please check the description below for more information. In the end, we will also share details about the Azure Data Scientist Masterclass, which will not only help you understand basics, but it will also give you an idea of the learning path to follow. It would be helpful, especially when you're preparing for Azure Data Scientist certification. That's designing and implementing a data science solution on Azure, which will earn you Azure Data Scientist Associate Certification. Welcome to another episode of Azure Video Series from K21 Academy, where we take you from complete beginner, covering no-code machine learning, to all the way training models, including running experiments, monitoring, and working with data, as well as how to prepare for the Microsoft Azure Data Scientist Certification. We have taken a clip from one of our certification training program on designing and implementing a data science solution on Azure. That's DP100. And in this clip, a Microsoft certified trainer will talk about data stores and data sets in Azure. So, this is a clip taken from a module on working with data. Now, let's hear from an expert trainer on the same. Data is the most important thing in machine learning. In Azure, we have two concepts with us. We have data store and data set. So let's start with the data store first, then we'll go to the data set. We'll see what's the meaning of that, how to work with it, and so on and so forth. Now, if you've worked with Azure, you are aware of various locations are there in the cloud, such as storage account, data lake, uh, SQL database, and so on and so forth. This is where my data really exists in these various locations. Now, Azure storage account is 500 terabytes of object storage. Data Lake is Hadoop file system where if I am working with any big data cluster, my data will be in Data Lake. There is no upper limit of Data Lake. You can keep an, as much amount of data as you want. Azure SQL is basically platform as a service database from where you can pull your structured data. Databricks file system is a local file system of Databricks cluster, which is Spark cluster in Azure Cloud. If these terms are new to you, you have not worked with them, then you can request uh, more, uh, you can say, links uh, during the session or you can request for more reading links from the teaching assistant as well uh, do let us know about that now once my data is over there let's say my data is there in azure data lake which is uh, there is no upper limit of it i may have uh, uh, 600 terabytes of data lying over there then i may have a remote databricks cluster or a spark cluster or any big data cluster i want to do that model training over there so what i can do when i want to access my data i can upload my data to data lake I can download my data from data lake. So when we download, we want to download in the remote target, like data was in data store and now your training is going in the remote cluster. So in the remote cluster data should get downloaded. So steps should be there where we can say, get the data from data store locally, put it over there, start the training. We can also mount these locations. If you don't want to download the data, you can simply say mount, mount, location mounted now slash star.jpg read all files so it will start reading all the files from there all the images loaded into for some cl image classification just one example which came to mind right now now having said that how do we add any data how do we make any data store how, how do we add the data store so if you see in the example right now uh, i'm reading so over here if you check this out so we are basically saying register azure blob container in the workspace which is the current workspace which got loaded over here in this step and the data store will be registered with this name blob underscore data and this blob underscore data is having container called as data underscore container over there and it is inside the account uh, az underscore storage account which is shivam storage account one you can in example you can understand like this and account access key is basically the primary key or the secondary key, key of shivam storage account one which is used for uh, authentication purpose when that registration happens. If I don't have the authentication key, I cannot register that. Uh, my request will not be entertained by Azure. So you, we will do this one process and this is one snippet. How do we register, register the data store? Now coming over. So, so if you want to work with the data store directly, you can upload your files over there. So if I want to upload the file, I can simply say uh, blob underscore data uh, ds.upload. 
uh, and this upload is basically where what we are saying as uh, I want to upload the file and the file in the source directory slash files and the target is slash data slash files. So I want to upload my data from this source directory, which might be locally available to that remote location in the cloud, which might be in storage account uh, inside one folder called as slash data slash files and override true means basically that if, if the file already exists over there, uh, it doesn't matter, just overwrite it. And uh, the progress is just like, see the progress if the file is very big, which you're uploading. So like 0% uploaded, 10% uploaded, 20% uploaded, it will show you the progress as well. So now, once your data is uploaded and you want to download the data into the remote location, you can simply use dot download and that will be help, will help us out to download that data into that location and work with it. So these snippets are asked in your certification as well in the lab. We are using them again and again for multiple times. We'll use them. You'll get more comfortable with it. So have a look at this. Now, once I have done that, so imagine I have a remote location where I want to train my so model using the data, which is there in the data folder. And what is this data folder? This data folder is basically the location uh, of that remote data store. So data should go from that remote data store into that remote cluster and should train over there. And maybe the script I'm executing from my laptop right now, I'm saying, okay, just uh, run that. And this is going to happen in the cloud to cloud. So in that scenario, I need to specify that where is that data available. So in this scenario, we are basically passing that data. We are saying that, okay, this data reference is actually that, uh, uh, you can say data slash file, and uh, you can download into the remote computer with a, in a folder called as training underscore data. So in my code, I may be saying pandas read from this location training underscore data as such and uh, uh, panda pd dot uh, read csv and the location from where we want to read this is training underscore data slash some file name so these type of things we may have to uh, now we want to pass because we want to do cloud to cloud training over there so if i think it further if you see over here this is where we are doing that we are saying that okay uh, so this is uh, where you run that estimator so after this you will say submit and in the uh, and you will pass this estimator value as such and it, we are using scikit-learn which is framework specific estimator and this is part of the training script we will be doing this in the lab now uh, we will have this training script and we will pass that data location from there inside this and then the training will happen along with that so this part is what we basically are doing in the next uh, lab so uh, let's understand like this. So imagine my data, I had multiple files in my data store. So in my data store, I had multiple images as such. And I want to train any classification, image classification along with those hundreds and hundreds and thousands of images over there. So in that scenario, what I will be doing, I will be making a file data set. So what is a data set? Data set is basically uh, just schema as such. It's, it makes life easier. If you remember in the previous lab, we made diabetic hyphen data set and that you dragged and drop into your designer and you trained the model with that. So that was a data set which you created and it made life very easy because you were able to now drag and drop it. And you can also refer in that inside the code with its known name as such. You don't have to give any connection string. You don't have to give any more details, just the data set. You can start using it. Everything is predefined. So we have two type of data set. We have file data set. We have tabular data set. File data set is used whenever you have multiple files such as images are available inside the data store. I want to pull all of them. I want to train one convolutional neural network with that. That's where it comes into picture. Second is called as tabular data set. Now tabular data set is something if I want to, let's say I have movie.csv over there, or I have diabetic.csv over there in the data store. I want to pull that data and I want to load that into a pandas data frame. So in that scenario, what I have to create is tabular data set. So just to understand if you have multiple files, we create file data set. If we have, if you want to load the file into pandas data frame, we create tabular data set. Then how do we do that? If we think it about, so if we think it through, check this out. So we basically over here, we are saying that, okay, create and register a tabular data set. So data is available in this particular location. There is a file which we are trying to read with the uh, star.csv as such. There is a file over there in that location. And we are simply saying uh, data set dot dot tabular from delimited file. So from that file, uh, that's a CSV file we are defining as such. And over here we say, now please register this. So as soon as you register this data set, it will be 
uh, getting registered in the Azure cloud. And uh, now I can start using this in my code itself. If you want to read that file back again, let's say I want to see how many, uh, how many basically, how many data sets are already registered. I can simply run the code as such and I can have a list of all those files over there. Now, if we think it through that, uh, so over here you can see that here is where I have uh, a file data set. We are basically saying data set dot, dot file dot from files. Um, and over there we have, maybe we have hundreds and thousands of images as such. So pull all those images and please register that as part of uh, a file data set, file underscore ds equal to file underscore ds dot register. And it is getting registered right now in this one particular line as such. And to print it out, you can just say get by name. You can say which data set image underscore file. And uh, this particular data set, which we gave the name over there, file data set will be now printed out over there. So what is the meaning of, uh, so one more time, Tableau data set is used whenever we want to have pandas data frame and file data set means that we have multiple files. We want to work with the multiple files. So I would just create that entire location as a data set and I just say now in a loop recursively read all the images from there and train my model. Now if we think about how to work with it, so we can also work with a data set directly. You can, so over here you can say that, okay, and now pull that particular data set, load into a data frame called as DF and we can start doing, we can split the data now, we can train the model with the data set and we can start working with it. And over here in the second step, you can say, so now see, now if your data is available in a remote location, you have to specify that location to the script somehow. So how do we do that? We basically over here in the estimator, we can say that that input is, is this data set called as CSV underscore data and uh, uh, so not, not really. So if you, if you, if you read it further, so we basically are saying that uh, tab underscore data set is input as named CSV underscore data. So whatever this data set is there, which you registered is now being named as CSV underscore data. And that is being passed in the training script as CSV underscore data. So if we see over here, this is that uh, CSV underscore data set, which is uh, uh, coming from that uh, parameter file. And uh, then we can further load the data over there. We can further do the machine learning as such. Okay, check this out. Now, if you want to version your data set, you can also do that. You can simply give a new version as such. Or if you, if I say, let's say create new version true, and I run my command three, four times, then it will create those three or four uh, versions as such of my data set. Every time when it runs, it will create same, let's say diabetic experiment version one diabetic experiment version two diabetic experiment version three and version four like that if you want to specify if you want to uh, get some particular value back you can simply specify the version and you can get that particular value back from the cloud so that was a clip taken from one of the lessons from our step-by-step -step training program on microsoft azure data scientist that's dp100 I would like to invite you for a free 90 minute session with our Microsoft Certified Expert Trainer, where we talk about the Azure Data Scientist training and share information about getting certified by using our step by step roadmap to go from complete beginner to a certified Azure Data Scientist. If you are interested, register for a free class by going on to k21academy.com slash dp100 02. Additionally, we will show live demo predicting diabetes in patients using machine learning. We will also share information about the certification exam. So you can register for free by going on to this URL, k21academy.com slash dp100 02. I will see you in another episode of Azure video series from K21 Academy. Till then, take care.